to demo for the Digital Library of the Middle East uh, work cycle by the Stanford Libraries Access Team. I'm excited this week to share a bunch of new functionality and fixes that we've made. So the first thing I want to talk about <clears throat> is a follow on from the last sprint, but some updates and changes to um, and fixes to how the date range uh, switcher and slider work. So previously there was noticed a bug where when switching between Gregorian and Hidri um, and back again, uh, things did not update, but we've resolved this now, and so these things are, um, you know, uh, working out uh, as expected. There's also been some changes here to fix some spacing and alignment issues in uh, uh, different uh, viewports and screens. Uh, with that, I want to hand it over to Chris to talk about some changes into our search uh, configurations. Great. Thanks, Jack. Um, in our last sprint, we made a series of changes to our solar indexing and I did some tuning to try to improve both the recall and precision of our search results. Um, first, uh, we expanded uh, the number and types of indexed and searched catch-all fields um, to include all the text from our DLME intermediate representations. Um, this should make it possible to search the DMLE site and at least retrieve some matching documents, even if the user wants to explore the site in some unanticipated ways. Um, perhaps an example of this is I'm very interested in items that are 51 centimeters uh, in, in dimension. Um, previously, this was not an indexed field. Um, now we're able to do that sort of search and retrieve some of these documents. Um, the, the same would apply for any other uh, data that's in our intermediate representations. Um, second, we tweaked some of these catch-all fields to, uh, to make sure they're indexed with language-specific stemming applied uh, for both Arabic and English um, in order to ensure there's consistent behavior uh, between matching some of our uh, explicitly indexed fields uh, with these catch-all fields, no matter where the data itself was encoded. Um, second, in this sprint, we added support for searching by identifier. Um, in this first iteration, we support both exact matches of, of searches. So here's an identifier um, for, for an item in, in our search index. And I can either search it using everything search, or if, if I want to explicitly call out that this was an identifier and not uh, data in some other field, um, we also have a fielded search available for identifiers. Um, and in this first iteration, um, like I said, we, we support both exact matches and matching fragments of provided identifiers. So instead of uh, 43135.1, we can use a, a star here and retrieve uh, three, four items um, that happen to have that uh, identifier prefix. Um, hopefully this is good enough for known item discovery by DLME staff and contributing organizations. Um, but because identifier formatting does vary pretty widely between contributor organizations. Um, I, I think we can expect some future work, um, perhaps after more requirements gathering and data analysis to expand the types of matches um, that, that we make for these identifiers. Uh, and again, once we roll this out, we can keep an eye on how it's being used by DLME staff and others uh, and uh, try to improve consistent behavior. Although again, because of the the varying identifier formats across the corpus. This may prove particularly challenging. Um, finally, uh, we tweaked and expanded how relevancy boosts work um, in the site, including um, adding some pretty significant relevancy boosts to phrases uh, in, in searches. So if I search for Iran architecture uh, across the site, um, you know, we're now retrieving documents that, that talk about both Iran and architecture, but uh, now with these phrase boostings, uh, we also pull up to the top of the search results uh, documents that have the, the terms Iran and architecture very close to each other um, to make sure those will rank higher than documents that you know, happen to be about Iran and architecture, but not, not necessarily Iranian architecture. And this applies uh, both to the full search term as provided. Um, and for, for longer terms, we also split, split the search tokens uh, in, into two and three word shingles uh, in order to make sure you know, fragments of a user's query will, will also have the same behavior. 
Uh, second, we also made some changes to increase the precision of our multi-term searches, um, effectively making searches with more term matches, effectively requiring uh, searches have more term matches while still allowing some non-matches for longer searches to hopefully continue to provide sufficient recall for uh, what, what's called known item searches and, or uh, document matches across organizations, um, which in this aggregation uh, may have slightly different metadata standards and, and practices. Uh, we, we don't want to exclude res from results, um, especially because that with an aggregation like this, getting those cross-organization results is probably very interesting and something unique to DLME. Um, an example of how we've, how we've done this, um, you know, I did some log analysis and found a search for this, this forward term, um, clearly a, a person. Um, and right now we're retrieving 16 results um, because every document in here has to have all four of these terms in it now. Uh, previously, I, we only require, um, I think it would be two, two or three out of the four, um, which could result in, in some low precision uh, results. Uh, one thing I'll note uh, with these changes is, uh, you know, we, we've, we've gone um, to require more terms. Um, if I put in uh, an additional term here for Sir Arthur Edward Broadbent Parsons, um, we'll get a slightly different result set um, that actually have to have the word Sir in them. Um, and whether that's a good thing or not, uh, I, I will leave to uh, others to, to evaluate. Um, we have pretty extensive control about how we tweak these things, um, but we want to you know, kind of be careful and make sure that what we're doing is providing useful results to our end users. Uh, and finally, uh, once we deploy this, it will also be very useful to keep an eye on our search analytics um, to make sure that the, the changes we made here don't limit the recall too much. Um, and in particular, uh, we want to keep an eye on the number of zero results pages we're, we're providing to our users, uh, because that could be very frustrating for an end user. And uh, we, we want to provide useful matching, even if it's, if it's uh, only matching part of a, a user search term, um, especially in a, a corpus that's it, as, I, I think DLME has about 100,000 documents right now. So the, the likelihood of a zero results match um, for very specific searches uh, could be very high. And with that, I will hand it over to Jesse uh, to talk about some of the feedback form changes we've made. Uh, thanks, Chris. Um, so yeah, as as Chris mentioned, I'll just want to show some of the um, some of the feedback uh, updates that we've made. Um, uh, right uh, on this page, I'll just kind of mention and call out. Uh, this is a, you know, a a search results page. Um, we've updated the um, the what was our traditional feedback link uh, up in the top right corner, um, and just uh, I've updated some of the wording. Um, it now says contact us, uh, as well as we've updated some of the uh, the text, uh, kind of the help text um, of of this form. Uh, so this is now this uh, contact us. Uh, feedback form that's available across the entire exhibit um, has now been updated. Uh, we've also added kind of a, a new uh, type of feedback form that is specifically available um, on record views. Uh, so this is uh, allows us to um, uh, flag records or just get feedback about um, records in particular. Uh, so if I uh, click on this button that's now available on the side, um, we'll get this modal uh, pop up that uh, explains that um, if there's kind of questions regarding the item. Um, I guess one other good thing to call out about this particular form uh, in difference from the uh, exhibit wide contact us form, which does require that a user gives us their email address in order to submit their feedback. Um, this In this feedback form, um, the uh, email address is optional. So um, uh, it, it can just be um, the question or the comment. Um, we'll also mention um, that we do have uh, currently um, you know, right to left support for this button. So it shows up in the correct place with the correct text orientation. 
Um, uh, we do ha still have some uh, translations to add to this form uh, to update some of these uh, to update some of the labels here, but uh, once we have the translations, um, this should have uh, full um, right to left support uh, for for this. Um, and I guess I will also just uh, uh, also to mention and to show um, uh, that uh, you can submit it again without the email, um, which is kind of a nice feature of this form. Um, you can submit that, and then you can also see that we have our custom uh, message that we uh, provide to the user uh, explaining that their feedback has submitted and that it will uh, be taken care of as soon as possible. Uh, I would now hand it off uh, to Jack to uh, talk about some uh, features we've been adding to Spotlight around browse categories. Thanks, Jesse. Um, so one of the things uh, we've really focused on this past sprint um, is enhancements uh, that will drive um, a browse page and uh, the home page. And some of these enhancements really kind of uh, focus on being able to categorize uh, browse categories into new types of groups. So currently in DLME, we just see these like time periods. and um, you know, we've generically renamed this to browse by time period, and that's kind of all of the categories we have currently. Now we want to expand this out uh, to support the updated homepage designs and updated browse page designs. And to do that, we've been focusing on our efforts to build in the backend functionality in the spotlight to be able to uh, add this. So what we can see um, here is kind of the back end uh, dashboard of Spotlight. And, um, you know, this is the editing screen that allows uh, curators and uh, really Jacob to uh, edit and uh, curate, create uh, browse categories. So we see here he has a bunch of published time period ones, and there's some yet unpublished uh, manuscript ones. And the thing we've added this week is uh, this browse groups tab. And what this allows Jacob to do is to uh, create, edit, publish, unpublish, delete, uh, new types of groupings of categories. So here there's the serials one created, manuscripts one created, and recently added. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create one called uh, time period, time periods. So I'm gonna save that. Um, and uh, now that's created, I'm gonna publish that and I'm gonna publish the manuscript one. We can see there's one category in the manuscript one and one pub and it's unpublished. So I'm going to go ahead and save there. And, um, you know, and then I'm going to click over to my browse categories and just this one time period, I'm going to edit and pop it over into time periods here. So what this is now set me up to do, um, and this has changed uh, how this page is going to work here. Well, this was labeled browse by time period, and of course we can change how this is labeled. But now I have two new types of groups published. Remember we published the manuscript one and the time periods one. And now these are actually filterable and selectable uh, to the different browse categories that are within them. Now, manuscripts didn't have any browse categories that were published, so it's showing empty. This is what we would expect. If we add published browse categories to here, uh, there would be more that would show up. And time periods just had that one that we added. So when we click that, we see that. Um, you know, this is now all uh, completely manageable by an exhibit curator in the back end side of this. So, um, you know, so. Now there's um, you know, no additional code changes. We, we foresee that uh, for, for us to create new browse groups, uh, add different categories to those browse groups, uh, enable them, disable them, wait for QA. So this is just a really powerful feature uh, to manage uh, these types of content. These same browse groups will eventually go and help drive um, the content that's shown on the homepage. Uh, right now, we just show certain browse categories here, but uh, eventually these browse groups, the same browse groups that we're managing for this page can also be um, applied selectively to the home page. All right, well, that's all we have. We'll see you next week.